He's an AFL legend and Richmond's favourite son, Matthew Richardson. Welcome to the Dawson D Show. Great to be here. Oh, mate, we're stoked to have you. So we were just saying before, it's 26 days since the grand final. Does your life change almost a day after? Like, to talk us through what you're going through at the moment. Yeah, it does. It does uh, working in the AFL industry. It is, you know, it's pretty all-consuming yeah. while the season's on. And then when it finishes, it's it sort of, you know, you go from everything to nothing sort yeah. of thing. But, uh, look, I've still got a few little things going on, but I quite enjoy having a few months sort of off at the end of yeah. the season because I guess during the year, you know, you're working – you know, sometimes three games a weekend, sometimes even four now yeah. with the draw, you know, Thursday night games. Mm. So, you know, you're, you're away from home a little bit. You're, you're working at night. Uh, you never see your friends on a weekend or your family. Yeah. So when you get to the end of the season, you need to start reconnecting with yeah. people. Just... So, yeah, it, it's good to sort of have a deep breath at the end of the season and, and get to know your friends and your family. Yeah, again. how good's that? Well, we've... But don't, I'm not complaining. I'm, yeah. I always yeah. say this. Very, very lucky to be working in the AFL industry, particularly 13 years after I finished playing. Yeah. If you had told me that when I retired, I wouldn't have believed you. Wow. So, yeah, I'm that's, very lucky. That's a long time. Actually, we were talking about this. We went and got a coffee this morning. We are like, what can we ask for each other, you know? And we were speaking on that. So the whole interstate thing, like, do you still go interstate quite a lot as well? Yeah, we didn't go quite as much this year. I, I don't think there was any particular reason behind that. I think it was just the fact that a lot of the Friday night games, which is the games that I work on predominantly, just seem to be in Melbourne. Um, there wasn't as many Friday night games interstate. And that probably means that, you know, the West Coast Eagles, for example, didn't have a good year, so mm. they probably didn't cop the Friday night games they may yeah. have got in the past. So we didn't go to Perth very often. Um, went up to Brisbane a few times, Sydney, um, but didn't travel quite as much. Uh, I do radio on Sunday afternoon and radio was done from the studio. We okay. Did, yeah, we didn't travel for radio. Um, and that, that came about obviously because of the pandemic. And yeah. I think they probably just realised that, hey, they can save some, some funds, you know, of not course. travelling. So TV, you have to be there though. I think you have yeah. to be there at the ground. Whereas probably with radio a little bit more, you can maybe get away with it a little bit yeah. not being there. But um, yeah, it was good to be back at the grounds live for yeah. every game. It was pretty tough from the studio during COVID. I, bet. Well, I was going to ask, how do you find that even, I know you mentioned on the Sunday afternoon, with the radio, yeah. but how do you even find bringing the atmosphere to all, all us listening yeah. when yeah, you're in a studio? It was weird. I, rem I remember the first night that we did it uh, from the studio down in South Melbourne, um, right at the start of the pandemic. I'm like, how are we going to manufacture this enthusiasm right yeah. from a studio? So they, they did pipe a bit of crowd noise through, <laughs> they, you know. For uh, you guys? Well, just yeah. and for people at yeah. home, just yeah. to try and create that yeah. atmosphere. It was tough. Look, the hardest thing I found with doing that was the fact that I think some of the callers didn't mind it so much. Of course, they'd rather be at the ground. Yeah. But they're, they're often calling just from what you see on the yeah. screen, right? Whereas the, the role I play, whether I'm on the boundary or, or up in special comments, quite often you're looking down to the back line or up to the forward line to try and see what's happening. You can't see that on the TV screen. So mm. I felt like you probably couldn't do your job as well as you wanted to. But in saying that, we were still working when a lot of people weren't. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not complaining. So with the off season now, you've got the three young ones, and you love your music. Are you getting away? What's the resume look like? Or the, the, the what's the yeah. what's the word? The routine look like? The routine, yeah. Look, I guess with three young ones under five, it's actually harder going on a holiday than staying <laughs> yeah. at home because you've got to pack <laughs> that much stuff up. Oh. Right? It's like an ordeal getting out the door yeah, with three. The girls. list were just bikes, the scooters. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, know. you think of all the stuff you've got to take. So. Uh, no big holidays planned, a few little weekends here and there, head down to Lawn this nice. weekend and uh, my wife's family's got a place up in Queensland in Burley Head so Lovely. we'll get up there at some stage but just, just giving the wife a chop out with the kids <laughs> which time. I haven't been able to do as much during the footy season. Well, and she'll appreciate that. Yeah, she will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she will. So yeah, just enjoy hanging out with them. Uh, yeah, as you said, getting to some, some music, catching up with friends, just doing yeah. normal stuff. You know, when, when do you normally catch up with friends on a weekend, right? Yeah. Mm. So during the footy season, um, we miss, I miss all of the social events that we get invited yeah. to. Weddings and everything? Yeah, everything, yeah. you know. So, you know, quite often Jen is going on her own to things. So, mm. yeah, just be good to do that. Heading uh, to watch a band called Idols at the Forum uh, on Melbourne Cup nights. I'm looking forward to that. What but genre yeah. is that, Richo? Uh, well, you'd probably call it sort of a, 
um, a sort of it's punk, sort of okay. modern type punk, I guess you yeah. would say it is. Yeah. yeah. Doss oh. actually said in the car, we were actually. It's, this is going to sound ridiculous to you, but we're actually guessing. Sometimes we guess what our guests are going to wear. I know that sounds <laughs> ridiculous. And Doss said, I reckon it's going to be a Guns N' Roses T-shirt. That's what he <laughs> predicted. I was wrong. <laughs> well, I don't mind the Gunners. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought, oh, Richard loves his tunes. Well, yeah. Maybe a Gunners. I see they're coming back to Melbourne pretty soon. Actually, they're so. playing at the G. So yeah, yeah, big show. But yeah, love my music. So get out to as many gigs as we can. Yeah. Uh, well, we kind of said to you off air, we like to jump around a little bit. We don't follow a formula. But talking a little bit about the off season, we're actually really interested to hear the players' side of things. So in your time playing, did you ever get poached? And that's something we've yeah. heard a lot from. So we've heard recently Nick Rewalt talk about it, Matthew Lloyd talk about it, like these one or two-year deals at the end of their career to chase a premiership. Yeah. Did you ever have those offers thrown at you or in the law to, you know, chase a premiership rather than be the one club player yeah look i did have you know a number of clubs over the journey sort of you know knocked on your door and asked yeah. where you were at look I, I guess the first sort of seven or eight years of my career i never got out of contract you know mm. i always re-signed with okay. a year to go so no clubs you know potentially sort of in that period but i remember the first club that probably had a pretty decent crack was Fremantle at one point i okay. think it was around 99 2000 yeah uh we never really went down the track of entertaining that you know, I knew there was an offer there if I wanted to have a look at it, but I was pretty happy at Richmond, so yeah. that didn't go anywhere. Uh, I once went and spoke to Dennis Pagan when he was coaching Carlton okay. um, about the potentially, you know, crossing over there. I, I probably knew that I was never going to do it, but mm. out of respect for Dennis, one of yeah. the great coaches of all time, I, I went and had a chat to him, and, and when Peter Schwab was at Hawthorne, um, I think it was around sort of 2002, 2003, a brief phone call with him at one point, um, but it, it never got any further than yeah. that. Uh, and I think the reason being, I could, uh, being a Richmond person, my dad played yeah. there, um, and a Richmond supporter from, you know, as early as I can remember, I just, the thing in my mind was what if I left and they, you know, something mm, happened the yeah. next year? And that was the thing that kept me there. And I guess you could say, we saw that recently with like Brett, with what happened with Brett Deledio. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, he went to the Giants probably thinking I'm more chance of playing in finals mm. at the Giants. I mean, Richmond had a poor year in 2016 and and then Richmond, you know, win the premiership the next year. And that's what I was always scared of. Yeah. I, I, I probably probably didn't think it was going to happen, but I thought, what if it did? Yeah. So that – and I always wanted to be a one-club player as yeah. well. Yeah. But never went down the track of really even talking contracts with clubs. It was an initial conversation and then uh, can't do it. Fair enough. Well, to create Richmond to be a um, destination club, I'm sure you would have been the person that, you know, if they were trying to get players in, hey, Richo, can you give them a buzz? You know, what what, yeah. what did you do to get Nathan Brown over the line or these players that came across from other clubs? Was that something that was put to you? Uh, yeah, I've, I mean... Whenever there was a big name discussion, I remember at one point, um, you know, Jeff White, when he was a young player, he was discussed to, to come to Richmond. So I remember that being one player. Yeah, we when Brownie was coming across, you know, they got us all together. Kane yeah. Johnson, yeah. when Kane came from Adelaide, I remember catching up with Kane and having a coffee and just, you know, talking to him about coming to Tigerland. Look, I, I think back then it, it wasn't the destination club that it is now. Mm -hmm. You know, we did have some issues you know, we probably weren't aligned as we should have been off the field and on the field. Um, you know, coaches changing regularly and all that sort of thing. But probably in the last 10 years, with the stability that Richmond's had with their board and with their leadership uh, under mm. Brendan Gale and Peggy O'Neill uh, and the premiership success, they really are now. I mean, mm. you talk to you talk to a player and say, hey, come and come to Richmond, you know you're going to be playing at the MCG in yeah. front of 80,000 people regularly. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty big carrot to sort of dangle, so... We've seen that over this trade period yeah. with, with Hopper and Taranto. So. 100%. Well, yeah. We're like, we're just fascinated because of, I suppose, the legalities. Well, well, I'll right. firstly put this, Richo. This is a man who didn't like footy for a couple of years because of <laughs> probably the position the Saints were in. But right. Since trade radio comes on. That happens. When trade radio comes on, this man's just glued to it. Yeah. Everyone, everyone is these well, days, we've aren't been, they? We've been working in the footy space a bit more this year, so yeah. I've gone back and I've fallen in love with it. I think I wasn't playing for a while. I started yeah. playing again and I was more interested in just playing than the AFL. But speaking well, of that... Just, you know it's a strategic plan by the AFL to keep everyone talking about course, AFL of course, yeah. for the whole season. Smart. So the season finishes with that, then we have the finals, then we go straight into the trade. Now we'll have the AFLW 
finals in the draft. Yeah. So that'll get us up to close to Christmas time. Yeah. And then, you know, after Christmas, we start talking about, you know, pra- practice matches and who's going to win yeah. what. And then we're into the season again.